I've been working on building my $1,000 CubeSat for 12 videos now, and it's finally starting to look like an actual CubeSat. Two boards, battery powered, and enough software to make it work. So I think it's time that I evaluate where I am on my project of building a $1,000 CubeSat. I have built about one half of a CubeSat, and there's definitely some other stuff left to do. So I wanna talk about what else I have to do, uh, possible future revisions of this hardware, and how much money I've spent on this so far. But first, I do wanna talk about this shiny new purple avionics board. And as always, you can find the design files for this uh, linked in the description below on my GitHub page. It's a four layer board that I had made at OSH Park. And while it costs a bit more than the green uh, EPS board that I had manufactured at PCB Way, I really like the quality of these OSH Park boards. Anyway, this board has an STM32 microcontroller on it, the same model of microcontroller that I use on the EPS board. That just makes it easier for me to write software. I don't have to worry about uh, writing software for two different targets. Makes it easy on me. Otherwise, this board has a magnet torquer, a gyroscope on the bottom, uh, some temperature sensors. It also has some H-bridge drivers for magnet torquers, a CAN transceiver for communication, and an MRAM memory for persistent storage. I also have some hookups for easy development of other sensors. There are two GPS ports here, which I can use to plug into some parts from SparkFun. I also have LANs here for this MLX75306, which is a linear array of photodiodes. I've probably mentioned this before, uh, but this is for my next sun sensor attempt. In its current state, this one half cube set is a great development platform for everything that I plan on doing going forward. The EPS board software is implemented like I described in my part 11 video. I also have communication working between the two microprocessors. The almost synchronous blinking lights that you see, that's the two processors communicating with each other, which is a key functionality of the avionics board. It can turn on or off all the different power rails, get the state of the power system, etc. But otherwise, the avionics software is pretty bare bones right now. I need to come up with a proper architecture for the avionics software, which I will likely cover in a future video because it's a bit more complicated than what the EPS does. I also just need to populate this board. You'll see that pretty much everything is left open right now. And that's because hand soldering always takes longer than I think it will every single time. So I just need to actually do that. Uh, and then once I have those, I can work on the software for the avionics board. So what's left to do? These are all the components I want in a completed CubeSat. An EPS module, avionics module, radio module, and solar cells. The finished product needs enough software in order to run a mission uh, from solar power only as it collects sensor data and communicates that data over its radio. I already have the EPS and avionics modules, so it's really just the solar cells and the radio that's left. The solar cells are likely not too complicated to do. The hardest part's just going to be figuring out how exactly they mount onto this existing platform. They'll be on a printed circuit board. They're just gonna fit somewhere on here. I'll have to figure that out. But that's not too bad as compared to the radio. And oof, I, uh, yeah. This is the part of the project that I have been putting off the longest because RF scares me way more than any sort of mechanical design does, and mechanical design scares me. So, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of work that needs to go into this radio in order to make it happen. I'm going to be borrowing heavily from other existing open source projects because, frankly, I don't know what I'm doing, but I guess we'll find out. Related to mechanical design, I'm really not too concerned about how the final form factor ends up as long as it's like roughly 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters um, in some sort of cube, I'll be happy. And that brings me to the topic of future revisions. This cube sat design is simply the first and I've already learned so much by building it. And while I'm going to continue using what I've already built in order to finish my first iteration of the $1,000 cube sat, I will end up coming back and revising this design 
and fixing up uh, the mistakes that I've made along the way. And I'll be making it smaller, lower power, whatever. Uh, there's a lot to do to fix up the design. Some of you out there might be familiar with the CubeSat design specification or CDS that Cal Poly maintains. That is the specification that I want to eventually meet, but I'll have to save worrying about those details for a future revision of my $1,000 CubeSat. The benefit of working with relatively cheap parts is that it doesn't cost me much to iterate and improve the design. On the topic of cost, how much did building this one half CubeSat cost? And to keep it simple, I'll just calculate the cost of all the major components on the board. So like all the discrete IC chips, I'm going to essentially just ignore all the little resistors and capacitors and other parts that are really inexpensive, just to keep things simple for this video. The green EPS board cost about $117. That's including the price of the PCB. The unit cost of this PCB worked out to roughly $7.30, which is remarkably cheap for this four layer board. The purple avionics board cost about $71 total. The actual PCB itself, this cost uh, $37 from OSH Park. The interboard connectors, these actually these actually cost more than I thought they would. They in total cost $12.30, which is actually not cheap. And I'll just say like, I don't know, $30 for the other small resistors and capacitors, just the other small components that I don't want to list out in their entirety. So in total, this cost about $231. And do note, the prices here are probably a bit off and your mileage may vary. I did buy some parts in bulk, which drives down the unit uh, cost overall. So I've definitely spent more than $231, but in terms of actual parts that went into this, only about $230. So far, these costs are well within the budget uh, I outlined in my second video, which feels like ages ago. I was expecting $120 for the flight computer and another an additional $200 for sensors, uh, I thought that the EPS module would cost somewhere around $210. So, so far so good. I feel like I'm doing all right here. There are still plenty of places where the price could go way up, uh, but I am well on my way of creating a $1,000 CubeSat. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Uh, I will hopefully be coming out with another video in the not too distant future. I'm probably going to fall down the rabbit hole of UHF transceivers and try to figure out if there's some design I can easily copy to adapt for this CubeSat. Anyway, thanks for watching.